I'd like to call the Whatcom County Council meeting to order. It's September 24th, 2013. Will the clerk please call the roll? Barbara Brenner. Here. Sam Crawford. Here. Kathy Kirshner. Here. Bill Knutson. Here. Pete Kremen. Here. Ken Mann. Here. Carl Weimer. Here. All right, will everybody stand and join me in saluting our flag? All right, thank you. And I'll remind everybody to check your cell phone and make sure you've got it on silent or vibration mode. And if you're going to be handing out paperwork to the council tonight, please make sure you leave a copy down here with our clerk for the record. From the Committee of the Whole, today we had a discussion with uh, Chief Civil Deputy Prosecutor Daniel Gibson regarding potential litigation um, regarding Swift Creek. That took place in executive session. We also had a strategy planning discussion and positions to be taken regarding collective bargaining per RCW 42.30.140, parentheses 4, parentheses A, which also took place in executive session. We have a special presentation tonight. We've got our behavior revenue, Behavioral Revenue Advisory Committee 2013 quarterly report to the council. And it looks like, is it... Um, Dave, that's giving that? Okay. Well, I'm not Dave. Yeah, you I'm don't look Benita. like Dave. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, my name is Benita Bowen, and I have the pleasure of serving as the vice chair of the Behavioral Revenue Advisory Committee. And many of you were there five years ago when we set this thing going, and our desire was to take one-tenth of one percent and invest it in programs and practices that would reduce the cost to government, hospitals, et cetera. And I have the pleasure today of introducing Bruce Van Glup, who is the District Court Probation and uh, Administrator, who's going to talk about a very successful program that has been used with these dollars. Good evening. I'm Bruce Van Glupt, and I am the District Court and Probation Administrator. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the Behavioral Health Unit in probation. Over the years, there have been a growing number of court clients and probationers identified with severe mental illness. Due to large caseloads, probation has historically focused on holding the client accountable to the specific conditions of the court order and less on the other needs of the client that are limiting their success. It became evident there were clients with mental health conditions that were using a disproportionate amount of the jail, medical, and other services in our community. They were simply falling through the cracks. The Behavioral Health Unit was created in response to the needs of these clients. The unit was established using the one-tenth of one percent behavioral health sales tax revenue in January of 2010. The purpose of the unit within district court probation is to, one, ensure that each probationer is compliant with their court-ordered conditions, Two, provide enhanced supervision to assist them in successfully accessing services that will improve their quality of life. And three, ultimately reduce their use of resources such as the jail and medical facilities and hopefully reduce recidivism. Probation officers assigned to this unit were able to work with clients in ways that are unique and different from those that work with a more generalized caseload. Many common diagnoses seen on the unit is schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, PTSD, particularly among veterans, uh, severe anxiety disorders, and substance abuse. Probation officers receive special training that help them understand mental health issues presented by the clients. The caseload is approximately one-third of the standard caseload, with each officer having approximately 80 to 100 cases. Those supervised by the unit are able to receive intense supervision with many clients reporting daily or weekly rather than monthly or less often. We've had clients request to meet with probation officers more often than is required, and we've also had clients request that additional substance abuse testing, such as breath and urine urinalysis tests, be conducted, and that would be above and beyond what we would normally have uh, conducted with the individual. The probation officers are better able to monitor medi uh, medication compliance with pharmacies. 
The Behavioral Health Unit Probation Officers meet monthly with Dr. Art Davis from the University of Washington, who advises them on how to develop strategies to assist the most difficult clients and the unique needs that they present. And this consultation services that are provided by Dr. Davis are also paid for by the same uh, mental health sales tax. Many of the clients see their probation officer as part of a support structure that helps them to be successful. We've seen great success with clients assigned to this unit, and I decide not to overwhelm you with numbers or statistics, but I do have one. Um, the current rate for satisfactory closure of uh, probation with these clients is 75%. When we looked at these same clients that had been on probation previously before the unit was established, their satisfactory closure rate was 28%. So we're seeing a, really a great in, increase in um, people being able to successfully complete probation. I do have one uh, example of a client that we have uh, diagnosed with schizo schizoaffective disorder, PTSD, um, entered the behavioral health unit in February of 2011. He was on, put on probation for his fourth DUI, but he'd been arrested a total of 53 times in his life and spent months in jail, months in psychiatric wards, uh, months uh, in and out of hospitals, um, had been on probation three times previously and had been revoked each time. And of course, there was a jail sentence imposed with each of those revocations. This client frequented the emergency room nearly monthly using, um, as a re result of him stopping his medications. Um, he had a very tragic history. Uh, he had a problem with uh, voices in his head and uh, had been suicidal. He also abused cocaine, methamphetamines, and alcohol. Um, his probation officer from the unit began to meet with him daily. Uh, daily meetings did not continue for two years, but they were a couple times a week, then down to weekly, then down to a little bit less often than that. But we were able to support him in taking his medications, uh, keeping appointments with his mental health therapist. Um, by receiving the assistance and acquiring housing and other services that he needed, um, he found he could manage his mental health condition um, through the counseling and medications. Um, he completed the probation in February of this year, it was two years, and he's not been to an emergency room or had a police contact in over two years. He's now clean and sober for 18 months, and this is a client that stops by frequently just to visit with his former probation officer, touch base, and uh, he feels it's a safe place for him to be. It's amazing the results that we've seen like this when clients are in an environment that supports them in management of their mental health. I want to thank all of you for supporting not just the Behavioral Health Unit, but the Probation Department as well. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. I feel like we should yes. <laughs> the credit goes to the officers that are working directly with them, so they work very hard with them. Can I ask Bruce a question? Councilmember Mann? Um, I, I just recently became aware of something called mental health court, sort of like the drug court. Uh, and the mental health court is in Seattle, is the one that I heard about and looked into briefly. Doesn't sound like what 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 you're doing here is all that far of a, a cry from that type of a program. I mean, I, I realize there's some differences there, but could you just talk a little bit about that? And, and, and is mental health something mental health court something we could do here? And you know, I think that it's very possible we could do it here. There's a number of them scattered around the state. Um, I. There's a lot of specialty courts. There's DUI courts. There's veteran courts. There's, there's, a, there's a number of these specialty courts. But my personal opinion is if, if there's one court you're going to have that will make the biggest impact on the greatest number of people in need, it's a mental health court. So I would like to see it established in our community. Um, I know that the health department has been working on researching some alternatives and some options, different models that are out there. But the one common theme that I've heard in um, all of this, the discussions is that those clients, now whether it be housed in Bellingham Municipal Court or Whatcom County District Court, that the clients that are going through a mental health court would be supervised by this behavioral health unit. It makes perfect sense because, yeah. quite frankly, we're seeing a lot of them already. We may be seeing all of the ones that would go through. We're already established. We're already the staff is trained and ready to go and is, is currently working with that particular population. So I know the health department is working on that, and I can't tell you the exact status of what the research is. I know they've been actively working on, on looking at different models and what might work in our community. So, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bruce. Councilmember McCremmon. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to uh, provide a little information <coughs> that's germane to uh, uh, Councilmember Mann's uh, interest in mental health. 
uh, had the opportunity as a member of the large urban county caucus associated with the National Association of Counties to go to Cook County, Illinois. Uh, this was probably five or six years ago, where they have a very robust mental health, uh, a mental uh, health. health court mm -hmm. that is a resounding success and is highly touted throughout the nation. They really uh, trailblazed the, the mental health court uh, issue and process, and it, they have very impressive statistics similar to those that you provided us this evening. So uh, I think that there is a, a, a real uh, possibility and potential benefits of uh, further exploring and ultimately actually, you know, having a mental health court here in Whatcom County. I think it would really be, be very beneficial. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, that moves us into our public hearings. We've got one public hearing tonight, and it's a resolution in the matter of the Whatcom County six-year transportation improvement program for the years 2014 through 2019. And is there a, let's see, is there a sign-up sheet? Let's see if we have an empty sign-up sheet. Did anybody want to speak to the council on the six-year transportation improvement plan? All right. Seeing nobody, uh, Council Member Brenner. I'll move approval, but I have some questions for Mr. Rattan. We'll have staff come down. It's kind of about placement only. Now, when you look at the first chart of uh, the order of the, each one, we made two amendments, but they're not in there. They're at the end. Oh. So... They should be project number 16. Right. Is Slater Road connector, northwest to SR 539. Yeah. And then the U Street Road was number put 17. in on as number 18. Well, 18. We, we said 17, but 18 is fine. Um, but it's like on one of the first pages, uh, page 165. Oh, I'm I was sorry. wondering why we yeah, didn't. Yeah, that have, is. Because it's an old one? Yeah, Joe Rutan with Public Works. Uh, the document on page 165 was as it was brought forward to, okay. the, to the committee. The changes were made. I did not change any of the backup documentation. Okay. But those amendments were uh, recommended for approval for the full council to um, mm -hmm. add the Slater Road connector and the U Street Road um, work as to be looked at to see, you know, not necessarily to move any further than that, but to spend some money to look look at uh, the pros and cons of doing both those. Okay, is there any further discussion on the six-year transportation improvement program? Before we vote, just... Yeah. Uh, Councilmember Mayer? No, okay, actually, I'm good. good. Councilmember Weimer? Okay. All right. Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion passes 7 to 0 as amended in committee. Thank you very much. And that moves us into our open session. During open session, audience members will have up to three minutes to address the council on any issue relevant to county business. Does anybody wish to address the council? Come on up. Come on up, speak into the microphone, state your name for the record. You'll be given 30 seconds when you're almost done. Hi, my name is Ray Barabo, B-A-R-I-B-E-A-U. You're probably wondering, what's jail guy doing here tonight? Well, it turns out the behavioral health presentation was something I wanted to hear, and I'm really glad to hear that that kind of system is working and working well. Your question, Councilman Mann, about expanding it is wonderful. I remember five years ago when I testified when that passed, I looked Sam Crawford in the eye and I said, I am a conservative, passing this tax is a no-brainer. And it passed. And I'm so happy for that because I like things that are local, local taxes where we can see the results as we did tonight. And I also see it in the jail with some of the new staff that's there to assist the mentally ill. Uh, 
That tenth of a percent sales tax stream for mental health and chemical dependency, uh, like I said, I've seen the effects in the jail, the uh, reentry specialists for the mentally ill, that has a significant impact for some people. And uh, it is accountable. That's the other thing. We heard an accountability report tonight. That's much better than sending our money to Washington, D.C. and then getting grants. Woof. <laughs> Flies away. The other thing I want to comment on is there's letters to the editor of uh, people that are saying, oh, we don't need a new jail and that. We ought to take the money and put it in mental health. Well, it's not an either or. We have two re revenue streams. We have the tenth of a percent for mental health and chemical dependency. We have a tenth of a per percent currently to support the jail and a new jail. That may not be enough, but the fact that we can currently bring in $3.3 million a year, roughly, for mental health and chemical dependency, and we've got really good people in this community that are studying the use of those funds to assist the mentally ill. And by the way, I have a friend of mine right now that's in the psych ward at the hospital. He self-reported. He's uh, being evaluated to get his medication rebalanced. He's also an associate with me in the jail ministry. I'm looking forward to having him back in the jail with us on Friday nights. It's a wonderful story. Self-reported, got himself in there. And because he had surgery in June, I'm sure the medication they gave him for some serious surgery messed with his uh, brain chemistry. But the pros are working on it. And that's such a good story. And there could be more stories of victories as we use this seconds, funding please. to expand the programs that are being talked about by the county health department and some of the other mental health professionals. Thank you for your time. Continue the good work. Thank you, Ray. All right, next speaker, please. Good evening, Council. Steve Harris, Whatcom County, City of Bellingham. I want to echo Ray's comments and some of the other earlier comments on mental health. I can tell you as a law enforcement professional, the, the statutes allow us to specifically take a person who is not accused of a felony or a nonviolent crime directly to a mental health facility, a triage facility or a, a crisis facility rather than jail. We just simply need the place to bring them. You know, we're starting down that road with the triage facility next to our, our center now. I would encourage you to expand upon that and give us more resources to take people that are in crisis and mental health issues rather than jail because everybody can agree it's not the right place for them. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Yoshi Ravel. Uh, thank you, members of the audience and staff and uh, county council uh, for your attention. I support the idea of a mental health court. Um, one problem I did have with what I've heard so far is the idea of medication. Um, what somebody who's dealing with a mental health problem, and I can speak from personal experience, is dealing with is finding a safe place to cry. We have forgotten that one of the most healing things a human being can do is shed tears. It's something that nature gave us, or if you want to say God gave us. It is a natural healer. The medications don't do that. They don't heal the emotional pain. They mask it for a little while. We need a safe place to cry, and we need to tell people it's okay to let that pain out. It's okay to let those tears out. That's how we require reacquire a sense of mental sanity. Thank you for your time, and I wish you all a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you, Yoshi. Next speaker, please. Greg Brown, Whatcom County. It's kind of quiet here tonight. It is quiet kind of nice. and uplifting. And uplifting, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, uh, I think i got to find the number here. It's AB 2013-309, the interlocal agreement with Everson. On the, on the property. I was here for the finance committee meeting when they first brought it up and I actually talked to the mayor of Everson had a couple of questions and, and today it kind of was just a no-brainer. It just kind of went. But it's, it's kind of been an issue with me because it's, it's kind of a signal. I sit in these meetings time after time and we're always fighting over development in the cities. This land was plotted for 48 residential homes. It's not all floodlands. I remember the maps. Uh, the market dropped, so it made this land available. It's probably a foreclosure to the credit union. So the city's going to take advantage of that. 
and, and, and maybe that's a good thing. But where are they going to replace these 48 residences? Where's the tax base going to come back for that? How do they do these things? How do we continue to build these parks and make all these things nice and continue to take the property in our cities and then complain while everybody moves to the county? So that's just my comment. It doesn't make sense sometimes the things we do and the things we profess that we're going to do. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Does anybody else wish to speak to us in open session? All right, seeing nobody, I'll close the open session, and thank you all for coming tonight. We'll move on to the Finance Committee and Councilmember Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. We had four items on our consent agenda. All four items passed with a recommendation for approval, and I move approval of the consent agenda. It's been moved for approval. Is there any discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 That passes seven to zero. The next item uh, is an ordinance amending the Whatcom County budget, the tenth request in the amount of eight hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred and four dollars. We recommended approval on this one, three to zero, and I move approval. All right. Is there any discussion on this item? All right. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Barbara Brenner. Yes. Sam Crawford. Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Bill Knutson? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. All right, that passes seven to zero. Item number two. And item number two uh, is a little complicated, so bear with me, but it, it's an approval for the executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between the county and the city of Everson and the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District for the purchase and subsequent management of property consistent with agreed restrictive covenant for flood control purposes in the amount of $342,000. That's the total amount. We're splitting it up half, or not half, but it's 118000 for the flood control zone district and the balance is for out of conservation futures. So we need two separate motions. Um, and I actually don't have that document. So I have it here. So if you can take over, Madam Chair, that would be great. Okay. So this item requires two votes, one as the council and one as the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors. And since this body serves as both of those entities, we will start with the vote of the, the council. The first vote will be on the approval of an expenditure of the $228,000 from the Conservation Futures Fund. So, Councilmember Mann, do you want to make a motion? Yes, I, I move approval of that uh, to that board. All right. So the motion to approve the expenditure of $228,000 from the Conservation Futures Fund is made by Councilmember Mann. Is there any discussion on that? And we are acting as the council. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes 7-0. The second motion we need to make is the approval of expenditure of $114,000 from the Flood Control Zone District Funds. I move approval. Okay. Councilmember Mann moves approval. Anybody else have discussion on that? I've never seen one of these where we disagree with ourselves. <laughs> yeah, somebody ah, might disagree with point. themselves. That's good. Yeah. All right, so we are acting as the uh, Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes 7 to 0. Can I add Councilmember something? I probably should Crawford. have said this during the motion, but uh, to address Mr. Brown's concern, um, I believe this property was considered in the 2009 uh, population projections, and Everson actually did uh, add urban growth area in that process, but I'm glad you brought it up. I, I'll, as we go into the 2016 process, we'll remember this one and be sure to ask if that's been included in those calculations uh, by the city. Right. Okay. We've got an item from the Planning and Development Committee, Council Member Yes, Knutson. and this is, this is a little complicated too. Um, in Planning and Development okay. today, we had one thing on our docket, an ordinance adopting amendments to the Point Roberts character plan. It came with a three to zero recommendation, but what we're recommending is that we forward this for concurrent review. So I move that we forward for concurrent review. Um, the ordinance adopting the amendments to the Point Roberts, Roberts character plan. All right. Any discussion on that? 
Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Barbara Brenner? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Bill Knutson? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. All right, that motion passes 7 to 0, and that will be forwarded for concurrent review when we do all of our comprehensive plan updates uh, early next year. All right. So we've got introduction items, numbers 1 through 3. Is there a motion to accept? I'll move to accept. Councilmember Brenner moves to accept the three introduction items. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of accepting the introduction items, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes 7 to 0. Let's see. Council Member Weimer, I'm going to call on you. Did you want to give an update from Natural Resources Committee today? We had a discussion about the Nooksack Loop Trail this morning for about 45 minutes. Um, it's, it's kind of a vision for a trail that would connect Everson and uh, Linden and Ferndale and Bellingham in a, a big loop. Uh, it's a long ways from being done, uh, but they're trying to take bite-sized chunks out of it to adopt it. And uh, it's a good plan, but it's got a long way to go. Okay, thank you. Council Member Knudsen, any other business? Nope. Anybody have any other business? Council Member Brenner? Just uh, one piece of other business, and I'm sorry Jerry Tan left, but um, maybe health department would actually be helpful, and I'll, I'm going to put this in my committee, but there's a, a person who needed to do a septic design system, septic system, and have it installed. He went through all the motions, paid his, all the fees, lots of money, and got on, you know, got a, approved for the design. And then the Lummi Sewer District decided they were going to supply that whole area with sewer. So he was put off and put off and put off for, I want to say, three or four years by the Lummi Sewer District. And then they suddenly changed their mind. So now he's got his, his permit has run out for the design. And it's the same design there. You know, he's been told that if he submits it again, it'll be fine. But he's got to pay up the cost of doing it over. Um, there's something wrong with this. When a third-party jurisdiction prevents one of our residents from being able to do something within a time frame, and if nothing else would be different, I think it really is important that we don't make that person uh, pay twice for something that was completely beyond his and the county's control. And so stay tuned because this is going to, I'm going to uh, make copies of this stuff for everybody too, but I've talked to a few people about it. This is unbelievable to me, and I don't think it's going to be something that's going to happen a lot, but on, on cases like this, we should be able to waive fees on, on issues like this. To me, this is completely unacceptable. Looks like Executive Lowes has something to say. Well, I do, I do know a bit about this, and I do um, have some sympathy for the uh, person that this is involved with. Uh, it's five and a half years ago that uh, this applicant uh, came in and got his uh, septic permit. Uh, provisions of code, I think, keeps that permit active for three years. There's a, a one-year extension that was granted on that. There's no provisions in code beyond that four years for granting any exemptions. Um, in, in my position, um, and the staff's position is, is that we have the responsibility of following the law as it's written. Um, we have allowed this, uh, and as a matter of fact, I've had conversation as uh, as recently as this morning with John Walpers over at the health department with that. We, we're encouraging the applicant to uh, reapply. He does have to pay the fee. After a five-and-a-half-year period, the health department does have a responsibility that there hasn't been any new wells put in around the, uh, around the property. Uh, it is unfortunate that the, um, the Lummi tribal water and sewer district, I don't know if I'm saying that exactly right, uh, did give them clear indication that they were going to allow him to hook up with it, and at the very last minute they did pull the plug on it. I, I do agree that it, in a lot of instances over the last year and a half, uh, a little bit more flexibility in code would be nice, but uh, I don't want to put myself into a position or put staff in the position of being uh, 
criticized one way or the other. We, we need to take a look at the, uh, at the law, the way it's written. Uh, we have fairly applied this uh, to this gentleman, and we're going to do everything that we can to make it as painless as possible. Unfortunately, he and other people within the community, uh, when these permits expire and they go past the extension dates, uh, have to reapply and pay the fees as, uh, as they're moving forward. So um, it's another one of those things through the 2016 comp plan. If, uh, if council feels that they want to give the administration uh, through the department some flexibility and leeway, um, I would feel very good about being able to grant that. But uh, in this particular instance, very clearly, uh, we have to say, unfortunately, it needs to be done this way. So I, I've, I've been involved with this for three, four months. Um, I, I, as I said, I feel for the applicant, but it is what it is in this particular instance. Councilmember Brenner. Well, first of all, we used to allow five or more years, um, and we reduced it. So that's one thing. The other, I, I think, of course, I, I think what we should have put in there and what, you know, what we need to put back in is giving, when, when you've got a property owner who, and there's not going to be any change to his septic design, it's going to be accepted and it's not, there's no change to it because nothing's changed around him. And uh, state law is still state law the way it is. So... When we have those things in front of us, I think there ought to be that kind of flexibility to extend it, you know, since we were the ones who reduced it to begin with. Councilmember Brenner, would you be interested in bringing forward an amendment to that particular zoning Absolutely. code so that we could yep. give the Planning and Development Services the flexibility? Yep. Okay. And I can make it nice and tight so people won't take advantage of it, and it will do exactly what we want it to do. All right. Thank, Thank you for bringing that up. Is there any other business? All right. How about reports from council members? Councilmember Crawford, Councilmember Kremen. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm very uh, pleased and honored to uh, report that the president of the National Association of Counties has appointed me to two uh, important committees. One is the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Steering Committee. And I've also uh, been honored by uh, being uh, appointed to the the coveted large urban county caucus, uh, which is comprised of about 24 individuals that represent uh, more than half of the country's population, and uh, I have the distinction of being the only a member of that uh, committee uh, that comes from a county with less than a half million people. So it's a real honor, and um, it, I think it's very beneficial and productive for, for me to have that uh, position, and I'll do my best to try to, you know, get what I can for Whatcom County and our residents. So I just wanted to report that to the council. Very nice. Very good. Council Member Brenner. Well, I had the pleasure of attending with Council Members Kirshner and Knudsen um, the Western Washington University Viking Athletes, the, their uh, their athletic department had a really nice um, dinner and auction and uh, to raise money for, for their athletes. And I guess the thing that most impressed me that night was the, the uh, I won't call it a speech, the uh, comments given by one of the athletes. He was, this, everybody else was doing their thing and so professional and all this a little you know, whatever, Pro very, very professional. He was speaking from his heart, and he was so moving. I couldn't tell you. I mean, he was just so impressive. What a great bunch of kids over there. Yeah, so. Yeah, there's quite a high caliber of folks that put that on for us, um, yeah. students at Western, so that was fun. I have nothing to report. Council Member Mann? I just wanted to say that we had a light agenda tonight but there's still a lot of work that goes on. And today I just had the chance to work with staff from IT and HR and our attorneys. And I'm just continually impressed by the quality of our staff, top to bottom. And I just wanted to point that out um, to folks that we really are lucky. We do have great staff. Councilmember Knudsen. Yeah, don't forget our council staff. 
because they are the best. Yay! <clears throat> Council staff. You know, I was going to say law enforcement, but then I didn't want people to think I'd been arrested today or anything like yeah, that. So. <laughs> or actually that you hadn't because you said it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Councilmember Weimer. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to miss next Tuesday's uh, health board meeting. I need to be in Washington, D.C. The Secretary of Transportation has asked me to spend two days reviewing some extremely boring data. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh -oh. I'm going to be gone, too. I'm going to be gone, too. What? Wow. Really? I'm going to be here. Oh, it's just health board. It's not our. It's right. not a regular council it's still, meeting. Still, you want to have a, a, a quorum. quorum? No, no, I know we want a quorum, but it's not like we can. Ken's going to be here then. Do anything and crazy. Bill's going to be council here. Council member Knutson, will you be here? You better be. Here. Okay, I'll be here. Yeah, and right. we, we did forget. You did forget to mention the fact that we were graced with the presence of the new secretary of health um, mm -hmm. yesterday, and uh, yourself, and Executive Laus, and our health. Public Health Advisory Board, as well as Waha, all got together, and there's a lot of good things going on in Whatcom County as far as um, how we're dealing with what we're handed from a federal level and a state level. What we're not handed. It was uh, encouraging to see us uh, working on this stuff. We're setting the bar. We are the yeah. people to follow in Washington. Well, in the nation, actually. Yeah. Um, Executive Laos has got something to say. I'd just like to add uh, from um, Mr. Van Gluff's comments earlier that the uh, health department is seriously looking at a uh, mental health court. It's not just something that's been uh, bantered about. We, we had a meeting. I was trying to find the exact date that we did, but a few weeks ago there was a big group of us that got together uh, and discussed the options, and uh, we ta had the opportunity of tasking some people to uh, look seriously at that and uh, and develop um, what a, a white paper of what that may look as look like. So, um, I, I believe we do have some great opportunities um, to improve on what's already uh, an awesome program, as demonstrated by. Um, um, by our court personnel. So uh, it's happening. We're working with the um, um, city of Bellingham on that, and uh, we'll uh, keep you up to date as we uh, move forward with that. Great. And Councilmember Kremen? Thank you, Madam Chair. In view of the fact that uh, it appears that three of the seven council members are going to be unable to attend the, the health board meeting uh, next Tuesday, I'm wondering, is it, would it be possible or too much of an inconvenience for the the that particular health board meeting be rescheduled. I, I, mean, I just think that you know that that's a significant number of us, and they're only we only get four of those reports annually, and it would just be nice to have you know uh, you know most of us, if not all of us, here to hear that that because it's a very important uh, report. So, thank you. Thanks, Councilmember Kremen. All right, any other for the good of the order? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>